Oh, thank, thank you very you much. So much. Thank you. What's up, baby? Day three, baby. Feature table, baby. Gonna be fun, just like June Life 4. Firework, baby. On the first day, they came in waves, just trying to survive. Oh. Yes! On the second, they settled in and proved that they belong. Yes! Yes! Now it's day three, and just look who's here. Well, this is fun. World champions. Everyone forgets I wrote the book. Big time players. That's the only stuff I play. And even bigger personalities. Oh! But one man encompasses it all. You call gonna be all over, baby. The 1998 world champion and prince of poker, Scotty Wynn, has forged an amazing legacy. I am all the in the book, baby. Yeah. Now the prince is on the verge of another deep run, and no one in the room is safe. They in trouble now. Day three of the main event starts now. I'm Lon McCarran with Norman Chad. Welcome to the World Series of Poker main event presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. It is day three, and for the first time, the entire field is playing together at the Rio. Still rolling, still rolling. While it remains a star-studded field full of big names, including seven former world champions. Day three, here we go. <laughs> like 15 more to go. Many new faces remain, including former chess prodigy Jeff Sarer. And things are so friendly. <laughs> Commanding table two today is poker pro Jason Mercier. The last couple of years, he's been making a lot of noise with some huge tournament scores. <laughs> Speaking of noise, that's amateur Ted Bort seated next to Jason. Jeez, I hope he's paper trained. Nearly $9 million is on the line. It's a big day, playing for big money full of big names and perhaps none bigger than the self-proclaimed Prince of Poker. And what a big stage performer he is. The 98 title plus two other times he's made it to the final two tables of the main event. To his left, David Sklansky, author of 13 books on gaming and poker theory. And also here is pro and rye poker observer Adam Schoenfeld. Where you been, baby? I haven't seen you. Uh, you you get wrestler. married, you have kids, or you Come have on, too much Scotty. money? Or? No one will go out with me. <laughs> I don't leave my cave. Adam's got a nice cave, low HOA fees, and it's wired for cable. <laughs> the blinds at 500 and 1,000 action on Sklansky on the Jack Link's Beef Jerky Pocket Cam 8-5 offsuit into the muck. Sklansky's poker books considered the Bible of Hold'em by many players. 4-5 offsuit for Schoenfeld, and he'll fold. Action folds to 25-year-old Chuck Danielson. As a founder of DeucesCrack.com, he's a modern instructor. Sklansky is an ancient instructor. You see, the D next to Danielson's name indicates he's in the dealer position, and with Jack-7, he raised to 2,700. Scotty Wynn with ace-nine offsuit. Hi, baby. Five-time bracelet winner will come along from the big blind, and two players will see the flop. It is 10 tray ace. Scotty hits top pair. Danielson missed the flop. Scotty checks. Danielson. Well, looks like he's going to try to finagle the Prince of Poker, 3,800. He flopped air, but doesn't seem to mind. Scotty with a check raise to 8,000. Danielson should mind that. <laughs> he, he, they, they clap for you, baby. They clap for me. <laughs> Come on, Chuck, make the good fold. All right, crowd, I'll listen. That's a foldable hand. He lays down. All right, we, 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 which card you want to see, the bottom or the top? The bottom one. Well, that was good. That's right, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Scotty Wynn making a statement here early on day three. We often compare the start of the main event to Christmas morning as anticipation meets excitement. But for me, today is the day when it truly comes together. As you well know, Norman, the field is now under one roof, and the main event champion is indeed somewhere out there. Lon, you focus on what's out there. I'll focus on what's right here. Scotty Wynn is one of the greatest characters in World Series history. Multiple bracelets, check. Main event champion, check. Fun loving and friendly at the table, okay, half a check on that one. Says baby an inconceivable amount of times in every sentence, check, check, and check, baby. Scotty Baby with a little more than 80,000, just below the chip average. Taking a look at some of the other notables, we see former champ Johnny Chan tearing it up with over 281,000, but right behind him, a host of other top pros, including two of them is Rocky Brothers and Jason Mercier. 
Leading everyone, though, at the moment is David Asseline of Montreal with over 387,000 chips. So from the top of the leaderboard to one pro that may be on his way out, Phil Locke all in with ace queen of diamonds against the pocket queens of Dylan Thomasy. We're leaving already. Oh. Phil Locke travels light, and I think he's headed to Mars from here. Locke at risk, and here's the flop. 9, 10, 6, oh, wow. two wow. diamonds. Go slow for the drum. They're putting in a drum roll sequence. Stop, stop, stop. Locke with a nut flush draw. Thomas, wow. he doesn't want a drum roll. He wants the hand to be over. Turn card now oh. is a diamond, and Locke hits wow. the nut flush and will survive. Pays to travel light. So Thomasy doubles up Phil Locke. Locke still the short stack, just over 21,000. And still looking for his first main event cash. Oh, yeah. So elsewhere, another amusing pro, Jean Robert Ballon, seems quite serious right now in a hand with Guy Thomas. Ballon just check raised Thomas to 24,000. Aces and fours on the board. Ballon, a former club promoter, now a poker player and self promoter. River card is a seven of spades. Ballon checks again. Thomas with a tiny bet, 3,000. Begging for a call. Does he want to check raise again? Nope, just a call. And Thomas turns over pocket aces for quad aces. Hey, quad fours right now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> quad fours. That's what I have. Alon, I may not be the sharpest tool in the shed, but I'm guessing Jean Robert did not have quad force. <laughs> so Thomas will stack the chips. One guy who is pretty sharp at guessing players' hands, Daniel Negrano. He's up against 21-year-old Eric Carr. I hope he has a note from his mother excusing him from piano lessons today. <laughs> River guard is a jack. Check. Daniel 11, checks. 11,000. 11, Bets. Be careful with that hand. You know, with that hand, you got to be real careful. I know, it was verbal before. No, but you, before you said 11, you went like this. I'm, not, I'm saying I know, it's fine. I, know, I understand. Just letting you know you don't want to. Actually, I think he's yeah. skipping geometry class. And so why are you betting 11 exactly? Seems like an odd bet, I think. Did you call? No, I shouldn't, because you have me beat, and I'm sure of this. All right. Hence the fact that I'm about to throw this hand away, I think. Daniel seems convinced he's beat. Hmm. Well, it'd be a strange bluff, wouldn't it? You know, you're not bluffing. Never mind. Daniel folds. Huh? Oh, you were bluffing? Oh my god, that was so bad. Car with rags. I pulled it a queen. I didn't have an ace. <laughs> he was bluffing. Oh my god. It pays to drink Slurpees. <laughs> Even if you're a pro, Jeez. the main event is one long walk through a minefield. Back at the Rio right now at the feature table, poker author David Sklansky is all in and on the verge of falling victim to the trip aces held by Damian Roney. Sklansky is out of strategy here. He simply needs running hearts or his main event is over. Sklansky knows he's a big dog and now he's drawing dead after the king on the turn. Roney takes the pot and knocks out David Sklansky. Sklansky, one of the best and brightest minds in the early development of Hold'em strategy. One less pro for Schoenfeld and Scotty Wynn to worry about at this table. Meanwhile, there are plenty of pros to worry about out in the field, including some other world champs. Defending champ Joe Cata currently holding his own after turning trip eights. He's getting paid off by Chris Price, whose two aces came up short. Cat is the champ, but the champ has not cashed at this World Series. A deep run in the main event would be very sweet for Joe Cata. A deep run or even a payday in the main event has eluded Chris okay. Moneymaker since he won an 03. Chris with ace king ace is trying to knock out Mark Weitzman, who has pocket kings. The flop did not help Chris. The year Scotty Wynn won it all, Mark Weitzman finished 14th. Turn card is a nine. Moneymaker needs an ace to knock out Weitzman. The river card is a deuce, and Weitzman will double up through Moneymaker. Weitzman's cashed three times in the main event. Moneymaker now short stacked, of course, only cashed the year he won it all. That, that was my game plan all along, trying to find the, the last ace in the deck. Failing that, Chris is down to 5,200. Elsewhere, 0-2 champ Robert Varconi mixing it up with bracelet winner Vanessa Selps, both of whom began this day with over 200,000 chips. By the way, Kata, Moneymaker, Varconi, not just champions, also nice guys. After the five on the turn, Robert bets 7,000. Vanessa, who has been known to be aggressive at a poker table, raises the 34,000. She muscles up on the 0-2 champ. And that will force a fold from Robert. Vanessa Selps has a lot of chips and a lot of game. Vanessa's bracelet came two years ago in Pot Limit Omaha. To two-time main event champ Johnny Chan in a big pot with Sam Bernstein. Chan just bet 50,000 on the river. It's a sizable pot line. If Chan takes this one down, I believe he becomes chip leader. Bernstein with a big decision, makes the call. Time for a showdown. Johnny shows sevens full. Bernstein mocks and Chan takes the pot. Woo! 
and the chip lead. That's a big buck. Johnny Chan with the chip lead at the main event starts spreading the news. Chan with almost half a million chips. A Hall of Famer at the top of the leaderboard. That will add a little excitement to the main event. Back over to table two and a man who knows what it's like atop a leaderboard, Jason Mercier. He's seated next to Ted Bort, who made a lot of noise in that controversial Prahlad Friedman hand with his barking. You were one of the barkers? Yeah. What does it mean? Well, there's two meanings of it. Okay, I was a street fighter way back in Chicago, and when I barked, I was, I was really pounding on you. Okay. The second phase was just more of an intimidation of a celebration. We could do without the second phase. <laughs> First to act in this hand, Jason Mercier with pocket eights. Mercier cut his teeth online, routinely playing 12 tables at once. And from under the gun are UTG. He raises to 2,800. Bort with queen eight. Bort, 46 years old, so he's almost seven in dog years. <laughs> <laughs> All right, action folds around to Bill Melvin in the small blind ace jack of spades. A software engineer who's won the Alabama State Chess Championship a record seven times. He calls and will go heads up against top pro Mercier. The flop is 6-5-7. Mercier's pocket eights are good. He picked up an up and down straight draw. Melvin with the nut flush draw. He bets 4,000. Melvin leads out. Mercier might pop it here. Just a call. Mercier is so mellow at the table. Turn card nine of spades. Melvin hits his nut flush, and that also gave Mercier a straight. Melvin comes out with 10,000 this time. If I'm Jason Mercier, I certainly might think my nine high straight is good. He still could pop it here. Nope, drawing dead. He just makes the call. River card now. Queen of diamonds. What will Melvin do now? Well, since the board didn't pair, Melvin knows his ace flush is good. And he knows to bet at 20,000. Mercier getting almost three to one on his money to call here. And you know, I still think Jason might raise it up. Mercier with a befuddled look, just with the call. Melvin with the pot. Mercier smarter than me, Lon. There's a news flash. I would have lost more. <laughs> Melvin bet the whole way. Jason paid him off in that 76,000 chip pot. Jason began the day with almost 200,000 chips, but takes a hit. Poker, as in life, is an up and down game, and Jason knows that better than most. In April 2008, I won a seat to go to San Remo in Italy. I ended up going and uh, winning the whole thing. When I won, I was pretty ecstatic. You know, $1.3 million is more money than I ever thought that I would be able to win. But nothing's really ever compared to that feeling when it comes to poker. After I won, we decided to go to a club. When we were at the club celebrating and having a good time, some locals tried to pick a fight with us, and it ended up turning into a big brawl. The bouncers threw us out, and those guys were out there waiting for us. Unfortunately, myself and two of my friends uh, got stabbed. I got a beer bottle basically stuck in my back and got uh, 60 stitches and was in the hospital for two days. I was extremely lucky because if it had been a few inches one way or the other, it could have hit a major artery and then uh, I could have bled to death. It was a pretty dramatic experience going from pretty much the highest point in my life to worrying about whether or not I was gonna die. I'll always have that memory and there's not really a week that goes by where I don't think about what happened on that trip. Since that near tragedy, Jason has been back to Europe, including Sam Remo, with great success, plus he won his first bracelet last year. What a year he has had. Back to the featured table where Scotty Wynn is residing on this night. I have to ask you a question. Yeah. How many times, like in a tournament, do people say to you, "If you call, it's going to be all over, baby"? You, you know, I only hear that for a couple, a couple of times. But really? Yes. Wow. But if you push me on, and then I, I go, if I call you, it's going to be all over, baby. So you do it that way. <laughs> all right. I'm going to do it a different way. <laughs> all right. I like it. Like That's right, baby. <laughs> of course, Scotty said, if you call, it's going to be all over, baby, to Kevin McBride on the final hand of the 98 main event. Scotty looks down at 9-4 off. If he calls, it might be all over. <laughs> he lays it down. Check swing there, baby. <laughs> to Damien Roney, the 27-year-old French poker pro, four tray of diamonds, and from the hijack position, a raise to 2,300. 
Adam Schoenfeld now. Ace queen of diamonds. It should be pointed out that Adam has made it to day two of the main event nine consecutive times now. I don't think that's a record, but it's certainly a Schoenfeld family mark. Adam called from the cutoff over to Nikki Evans, ace queen of hearts. He's from London, now lives in Toronto. And he makes the call from the big blind. Two ace queens and a four tray. I like the four tray. And I know how much you hate ace queen. Three players, the flop is seven, 10, six, two hearts. Evans with a nut flush draw, and he checks. Evans could have bet. Check. Roney checks. Roney could have bet. Adam checks. Adam wasn't betting. Two of diamonds on the turn. Evans misses. Schoenfeld with a nut flush draw. Everybody with the draw, nobody with a pair. 42. Evans bets 4,200. 4,200. Roney with his inferior diamond flush draw makes the call. Adam makes the call. Roney was getting three to one on a call, and then Adam was getting four to one. Jack of spades helps no one. Evans and Schoenfeld with their ace queens have the check mark. Three men who had big dreams, left abandoned on the side of a country road to nowhere. Evans checks, as does Roney. Adam now. He's thinking about stealing this one, 9,000. Adam decides to show a little initiative. He's picked a good spot. He has Evans stopped in his tracks. Evans has chips, but he lays it down. Roney folds as well. So Adam will win that pot. Adam, you know, I love you, buddy, but if you don't start talking a little bit, I'm going to call Penn and let him know there's a new teller. <laughs> a good decision to bet the river. Cheer up, Adam. You look so sad, man. This is work. It's work time. This is the job we do because we love it. Adam would love it more if he had a few extra chip stacks to work with, but he's got plenty of fight left. It was a weight loss bet of epic proportions. Six, Mike Matisseau gave Ted Forrest less than two and a half months to lose over 45 pounds. It's impossible. It'll be the easiest two million I'll ever make in my life. When the big day finally arrived, an emaciated Ted Forrest stepped into the Rio and onto a scale. When he stepped off, he was two million dollars richer. Right. Now Mike will have to put his money where his mouth is. Mike won't answer his phone. Mike won't answer his phone because he's pawned it to make the first payment. The mouth is promising to pay off Ted in $5,000 to $10,000 monthly installments. Yeah, There's former world champ Dan Harrington surviving his all-in. Dan spent the mid-1980s playing at the Mayfair Club in Manhattan with guys like Eric Seidel. Eric on the right has put himself at risk, hoping his pocket nines can keep him around. He was called by Raymond Rami with King Seven of Diamonds. The flop is five, queen five. Seidel's pocket nines hold up. Seidel second in the 88 main event. Rami third in the 07 main event. Seidel's still good after the six on the turn. And Seidel needs to dodge a king to stick around. It is a deuce, and Seidel will survive and double up to 13,000 through Raymond Rami. Seidel also finished fourth in the 99 main event. Let's go from a mild-mannered New Yorker to a less reserved New Yorker. Did you hear what I said? I'm going to ask you nicely. Let me have one. <coughs> Brooklyn-born Steve I'm, Buckner I'm bending the ear of Charles Alexander Silvestri. Buckner started playing Hold'em in 2005 and where else? A cigar shop. Buckner sounds like he's had a tough time beating Silvestri. Buckner bet 35,000. Silvestri folds and Buckner shows a bluff. Chip it. Now I owe you one, cuz. All right? I'm asking, is it fair? I owe you one. When a guy from Brooklyn with a cigar asks you, oh, is yeah, it fair? The answer one. is always yes. <laughs> and we said you and I were not going to battle, right? Until later. He makes an appointment with Sylvester for later. In, in the event of a nuclear blast line, I believe that cigar would survive. <laughs> Back to the feature table and another New Yorker, Adam Schoenfeld from Queens, who's in the company of others from his neck of the woods. So you're a New Yorker as well? Yeah. It's oh, man. You're from New York? Yeah, me too. You're from New York? One, two, three, four. As a rule, I will not play with more than one New Yorker at a time. Well, they won't play with you either. On the Jack Link's Beef Jerky Pocket Cam, Ron Gandolfo from Lindenhurst, New York, ace queen of spades. You get a couple of New Yorkers together, it's Yankees this, Yankees that. How about those Jets? How about those Giants? Blah, blah, blah. Gandolfo raised a 2,800 from under the gun, ace king for Scotty Wynn. I like playing with people from Vietnam. They don't talk about A-Rod and Jeter and Mickey Mantle. From UTG plus one, Scotty makes it 7,000. Plus, New Yorkers are so neurotic. Have you ever spent five minutes with Adam Schoenfeld? <laughs> Adam will lay that hand down. So the raise now back to Gandolfo with ace queen. He four bets it to 20,000. Did I mention New Yorkers are pushy? <laughs> you huh? did. Huh? <laughs> Damn, baby. Gandolfo looks like a nice guy, but New York is New York. Scotty with Ace King. All right, baby. Just, just for you. All right, baby. Lays it down. And shows it. He sends a message. You better have a hand against me. 
Gandolfo will not show. Scotty, you shouldn't show like that, because I'm the only one who knows how you play. So now you're evening it out. Where are you from? Long Island. Long Island. Long Island. All right. If I watch TV, you bluff me that hand, I will drag you down. You can drag me down. All right. <laughs> Whether the New Yorker was bluffing or not, when Scotty sees that, Gandolfo might want to change his address. Chris Moneymaker's in trouble at his table. He was all in pre-flop with 10-5 of spades. The flop was all fours. Chris behind with two live cards. I still got to get lucky. Victorino Torres with King High leads right now, trying to knock out the former world champ. Turn card is a six. Chris needs a 10, five, or six to stay alive. It's a nine on the river. Chris Moneymaker has been eliminated. You were lucky, man. But I wanted to be the one to pick him up. You don't want to kick out the guy who brought you in. Chris Moneymaker responsible for so many people in this room. Yep, you can see the impact of his victory all over the Rio. To table two once again, where Jason Mercier is a spectator right now as table mate Ted Bort with Jack Nine off called a raise from Bill Melvin and his pocket nines. They're going to the flop. And the flop is for Trey Jack. Bort with a pair of jacks crushing the pocket nines of Melvin, who bets 5,000. 5, we'll raise him. He's going to raise him, Lon. How much? I don't know that. Bort. Puts together 12,000. 12,000, Lon. I call. Melvin calls. They'll see a turn card. King of Diamonds board still best. Melvin in deep trouble. Check. Melvin checks this time. Board in an even more commanding position than he knows. 12,000 again. Melvin get the message? Yep, he does and lays it down. Uh. We got to hear it. We finally got to hear it. Is that annoying? Yes. Very annoying. He does that. Who let the dogs out, baby? You know, if a dog barked this much at the Westminster Dog Show, they would toss him. Scotty can be more bark than bite. We saw him fold his ace king to a four bet. So far, his pre-flop aggression is a tad below the table average. Action on Adam Schoenfeld, a seven of clubs. Schoenfeld went to Cornell University. You know, admissions departments do make mistakes. <laughs> Raised to 3,000. Yeah, if he's an Ivy Leaguer, I'm a rocket. You do have nice legs. Folded to Scotty win with ace, six of diamonds. Good for you. 18 more, right, baby? Scotty started saying baby in the late 1990s because he couldn't pronounce a lot of the other players' names, so he just began calling everybody baby. He'll go heads up with Adam Schoenfeld. The flop is trade deuce deuce. That missed both. Adam ahead with the stronger ace. Check. Scotty checks. Schoenfeld with position is going to use it. And he'll bet 4,000. Back to Scotty now. All right, baby, you got it. And he'll lay it down. Adam bluffs with the best hand and escapes with another pot. Someone almost cheered for you, and then they realized that Scotty lost, so they stopped. <laughs> I would cheer for Scotty against me also. He's the prince of poker. I'm just the guy. I, I know where he lives. <laughs> Scotty lost that pot, but he is up so far here on day three. Let's get back to table two, where apparently Ted Bort's barking has gotten the attention of tournament officials. Behavior. Yeah. Okay, you can't be yelling at the top of your lungs in the middle of a poker tournament. Do you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was over in the far blue section yelling. You oh, can't do it. It's disruptive yeah. behavior. So right now we need a warning. If that happens again, we will give you a penalty, okay? Really? Yep. Yeah, he's getting a yellow card, and I agree. There you go, man. Let's go. Honest emotions are fine, but if you're going to be Rin Tin Tin, you should be in a kennel. So the dog barker now a bit sheepish as he returns to action at table two. Apparently they want the game to be boring, where we all stare at each other and don't say anything. And Hey, I love true emotion. I love bursts of excitement. But these premeditated celebrations, frankly, are for the dogs. Out in the field, the man Bort shared some controversy with on day two continues his extended stay here at the main event. Prahlad Friedman in a hand right now. He's ahead with aces up after the turn. Friedman getting short on chips. That's 13,000 in the hand with Luis Nargenteno, often mistaken for Michael the Grinder Mizraki. He has a straight flush draw and a pair of nines. Well, the Barker called the clock on Prahlad on day two. You may recall Prahlad was beat. It appeared Prahlad called before the clock hit zero, but Prahlad's hand was ruled dead. Otherwise, he would be gone. Argentino just hit a flush on the river, and Prahlad moves all in. And a quick call from Nargentino means Prahlad Friedman is done. That's it. Prahlad pushed with top two, can't blame him, but felled by running hearts, and a day late, Prahlad is done in. 
He is stunned, and the news finally sinks in on the bracelet winner. Wow. Had you on ace clean. An exit some thought was overdue. Prahlad Friedman is now out of the 2010 main event. It's always fireworks when the entire field comes together, and for many, that means getting burned. I gave all the chips to you, buddy. Right. A day three field of over 2,500 is now below 2,000. And we may be adding one more to the exit list. Short stacked Eric Seidel all in with Jack Trey against the ace eight of Derek Young. Seidel needs a Jack or a Trey to stick around. <laughs> The river card is a six, and that will do it. All right, good luck. The eight-time bracelet winner is gone. Eric grinded as long as he could, but it was not to be. At another table, rock and roll star Sully Erna with pocket queens up against the pocket kings of Petter Nortug, a two-time Olympic gold medal cross-country skier. He's Michael Jordan big in Norway. He loves coming here because unlike at home, nobody recognizes him. And he just re-raised Sully all in. Okay, I call. Sully roll. makes the call for 41,005. And he'll be at risk and way behind. Sully Erna looking for something here, and now the flop. Jack, deuce, nine, nothing there for Sully Erna. Nortug's king still dominating. Turn card, another nine, no help to Erna. Erna cashed in the 06 and 07 main events. He needs a queen or he's not cashing this year. The river card yeah. is a seven, and that will do it. Yes. Nortug wins the hand, knocks out Good Sully Erna. Petter can do it on the snow, he can do it on the felt as well. Someone lied to me. They said 2010 was going to be my year. Hey, Sully, they've been lying to me since 1968. <laughs> so long, Sully. Meanwhile, Stephen Buckner and Charles Alexander Silvestri are at it again. Both check the flop. 13,000 in the pot. Turn card is an eight of spades. Buckner reaching for chips. 9,200. Silvestri calls. I don't believe that cigar should be allowed across state lines. A queen on the river. Buckner checked. Silvestri reaching for some of his massive chip stack. And he bets out 18,000. That is one imposing stogie. And a call from Buckner. The first one. Buckner shows a pair of sixes. And Yeehaw! that's good. One time, cuz. Good call, huh? Good call, cuz. Actually, Buckner's nickname is Cuz. Cuz, keep coming for me. Because he calls everyone else Cuz. Keep cause. coming for me, cuz we're gonna get in a big one. Buckner with a little lip and a challenge to Silvestri. It's all part of a street tough persona that is truly the real deal. I was a bad kid. <laughs> I tell the truth, I wasn't a good kid. I was a mover and a shake, and I did whatever I had to do to survive. At 16, I dropped out of high school. I dealt drugs, I was making a lot of money, but I got involved in the wrong stuff. And in 1985, I was homeless, living in an alleyway. It took me from the highs to all the way to the lows. So the story was I hit my knees and I said, I can't do this no more. And that truly was the last day that I used. And I, April 14, 1985. Asked me nicely, I gave it. I know you want. How you doing? <laughs> That's why I'm so happy all the time because I enjoy life and I know what it is to be really, really down and out. So I am a man of my word. When I got clean, the meetings taught you to live in the moment and sometimes a second. So that's where I got it, to live in the here and now. I am who I am. Somebody asked me how many places it pays. I said, I don't know, it doesn't matter. I'm going to play hand by hand and before you know it, hopefully it'll end at 12 o'clock and they will say, bag up your chips, come back Tuesday. That's all I want to hear. Buckner is proof of willpower overcoming hardship. Three years after being homeless, he was running the finance department of a car dealership. All right, let's get back to the feature table. And Norman, it's time for the Jack Link's Beef Jerky wild card hand. I've got to find another line of work. <laughs> I've heard that Vietnam is beautiful. Beautiful. I've heard it's beautiful. Be beautiful. I was in Thailand last year. Oh, I thought it was magnificent. You have to go to Viet Vietnam. Beautiful. All right, let's get this wild card hand underway. Action on Adam Schoenfeld. Adam Schoenfeld lived in Thailand for parts of three years. He folds his queen four. He's a mysterious fella. Scotty Wynn has the Jack Link's wild card hand. Me and you, baby. Scotty could have anything, anything. I'll put him on eight, seven suited. He calls from the small blind. How much are you playing, Scotty? 80. I just asked him. I never thought I'd get to ask that. That's the reason I said that. <laughs> Steve Tulch, an amateur from Montreal in the big blind. 
Queen six off. Battle of the blinds, and both are married. Here is the flop. Queen, deuce, nine. Tulch, we know, has top pair. Scotty. That's 1,400. Scotty could have anything, anything. I'll put him on a flush draw, eight, seven of diamonds. Tulch raises the 3,100. Come on, baby. Tulch is saying I've got a queen and you don't. I agree with him. It's my pot. Tulch, by the way, is about to celebrate his 25th wedding anniversary. He's offered me marital advice in exchange for poker tips. That's a bad deal for him. A king on the turn. Scotty checks, he's got nothing. I bet 7,000 here and drive him away. Tulch checks. I offered him a poker tip. <laughs> Four of hearts, that's a third heart on the river. Scotty, oh, again reaching for chips, 6,000. Oh please, that four didn't help him. Tulch now. Mr. Diamond, Scotty. Would have looked bad on, on, on TV, baby. Scotty's playing pretty snug, but I think he's bluffing here. He's telling Tulch I can beat your pair. I don't think he can beat ace high. Are they gonna cheer if you win this pot for me? Loud? Please don't. <laughs> Call him. They might cheer for you. <laughs> Call him. It's a busted flush draw. I'm going to donate to you, my friend. Two oh, pair, baby. Yeah. Two pair is good. Bottom oh. two pair wins the Jack Link's <laughs> Beef Jerky <laughs> Wild Card hand. You give me a free ride, baby. I hope his marital advice is better than my poker chips. Sorry for Deuce. Give the chips to Scotty. All right, that's it. I'm not messing around with you anymore. <laughs> like sure. so many before him, Tulch realizes that a little too late. Kata and Uriel Korsunski just saw a 10 hit the river on a paired board. Korsunski bet 35,000. Joe lays it down. Well, not every moment is as good as that one against Darvin Moon. <laughs> Must get to the game. Joe trying to coax his opponent into showing. Could race it off right there. To no avail. Kata trying to do what this guy did win back-to-back -back world championships right now. Johnny Chan, the tournament oh, chip leader, is facing an all-in from Arma Otto for almost 60,000. Johnny would gamble if he knew he was in a race, but he fears pocket aces or kings. His pocket jacks would go against the ace king if he calls. Still got a lot of money. I guess Johnny does make the call. Oh, and let the race begin for Atto's tournament life. And the flop 4-4 King Atto hits his king, and he's got the better two pair. The race is all but over. Johnny's going to need a jack. It's an ace. Atto with aces up now. Chan needs a jack to knock out Atto. River cards a deuce, and Atto will double up to over 122,000 through Johnny Chan. And that drops Johnny now to just under half a million chips. He is no longer in the chip lead. Chan with the face of a man who does not take parting with his chips very lightly. Back now to the featured table where Scotty Wynn is holding court. Taking a look at his voluntary hands played, he's currently at a fairly low 20%, but that's still higher than his conservative table mates. Are you still working in a magazine? Or? I, I work at Car Player. You still? Yeah, well, occasionally. Everything about Adam Schoenfeld is occasionally. Ace Jack, off suit. Because you have you haven't call call me come in no more. I I I thought you quit. You'll be in whenever you want, Scotty. And <laughs> Adam raised it to 3,200 over to Matthew Janda in the small blind, 23-year-old poker pro from California. I started with 85,500. Boy, Adam, very accommodating. I'd visit his cave anytime. 98. Raise well, 9,800. 9, Adam, a retired investor, not sure he wants to invest that many chips here. And he studies the face of Matthew Janda. I don't think he'll find any facial hair. He's looking very carefully at Janda. He's got a crazy neck pulse going. Adam falls. I don't know if that means you're weak or strong. I don't either. Juan, I have a crazy neck pulse every time I see you. <laughs> Isn't it after Lee going nuts? Yeah. Yeah. I can oh. see it. <laughs> and there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure. Control that one. You should show me your hand, then I really will do it. Yeah, I, I better not do that. And Norman, you know all those players we see wearing scarves? Now ah. we know why. Plus, it's freezing in here half the time. <laughs> At an outer table, German poker pro Sandra Nawayuk is on her feet. Michael Mizraki with ace jack trying to eliminate her. Nawayuk with pocket sevens. The flop is deuce tray seven. Nawayuk with a set. The grinder can take his left hand off his right shoulder. This hand is pretty much over. Turn card now. Is a four. Grinder picks up a wheel draw. Hold the phone, Lana. Five would knock her out. It's a ten on the river, and Nawayuk <laughs> does double up through spot. the grinder. Nawayuk, the second ever woman to win an EPT title. Victoria Korn was the first. Sandra won the German Open last year. I'm his Rocky Summit. 
Michael's older brother Robert stops by to get the lowdown on that hand. These two brothers played on day two of the main event together, but today is the first time all four Mizraki brothers are playing together. Michael's twin, Eric in a hand, right now with Steve Sanders. There is a Mizraki everywhere that I can see. <laughs> Sanders checked the turn, Eric bets 6,000. Sanders with a check raise to 25,000. And Mizraki lays it down. Ever since Steve Sanders had life-saving surgery last year, just hours after being knocked out of the main event, he's been an unstoppable life force. There's the youngest Ms. Rocky, Donnie, a magician, is sitting with and watching Robert Varconi and Vanessa Selbst in a hand. Both have queen nine and paired their queens on the flop. Kings came on a turn in river. <laughs> Robert moves all in on the river. That's a big all in. He pushed with 55 big blinds left. With that board, I don't know how he went all in. But frankly, I don't know how she can call. You got a hand? Actually, he has the exact same hand you do. You have a pair? He's got the same pair and the same kicker that you do. Who knew? I call. Wow, she calls! What do you call 46? Amazing, and they will chop the pot. Great call. <laughs> You kidding me? Say you got, Vanessa seems say a bit miffed with chop. Robert's play. <laughs> Look, what are you doing? I believe he's playing poker. And Vanessa was up to the task. It's like the worst hand I'm ever going to have. You got, like, that's like, oh, my God. How could you call that? Listen, I'm new at this game. I'm an amateur. Oh, he's not new, but he is an amateur, but an amateur with a main event bracelet. Back to table two, where top pro Jason Mercier has been pretty quiet so far, and Ted Bort has been effectively muzzled. He just flopped a pair of tens, jousting with Bill Melvin, who has a pair of aces. All right, turn card now. Is a seven. Melvin's top pair still good. Bort with a gut shot and the pair of tens. Bort always looks on the edge of something. Melvin check. Bort checks. All right, the river card is a jack, and jacks up for Bort. Earns him the check mark. Melvin now bets 10,000. I'm all in. Bet is 10,000. I call. Raise and a Melvin. call from Melvin. I'm gone. And Bort, nope, you're not gone. You double up. Thanks. Total 30K. Oh, don't do it. Don't do it. Oh, he wants to. You know he wants to bark, but they'll penalize him. It's OK. Oh, man, hey, my second tournament. I thought I was gone. You know, I know what it took to call that. Hey, I appreciate it. Melvin provides the double up to Ted Bort, who is still chasing the dream on day three. Back at the Rio, when the main event began, more than 7,300 players were entered by day three. That number reduced to 2557. Now a mere 1,842 remain. I mean, excessive is yelling, screaming, going all nuts, but just throwing a couple barks out there as a good win, you know? I don't think that was that excessive. They'll probably let you go do it in the hallway. How about in the bathroom? You do it in the stall, really freak people out. I tell, I tell you this much, man. That that would uh, that'd be a little much for me. <laughs> oh, it sounds like Ted Bort, the former Street Fighter, does have some limits. I should on Jason Mercier, yes. ace nine offsuit. Mercier was a substitute teacher briefly. Oh man, can't you just leave me alone one time? You get no respect when one you're a substitute time. teacher. He gets plenty of respect at the All poker right. table. Well, I'm telling you what. Just for that, I hope I get pocket aces on you. Please. Jason raised a 3,900. Ace king for Bort. Wow. Really? He sounds like he has pocket aces. Wow. I think Jason might right. believe he has pocket aces. A re-raise to 13-6. Can I see your chips, please? Yeah. Bort has a little more than 70,000 right there. Jason has them easily covered. I'm really interested in your attention. What are you interested in? I'm really interested in your attention. My intentions yeah. or? No, I mean you're, in, I'm, yes. I'm really <laughs> interested. I don't understand what you're interested in. That's all right, man. I think you can be talking to Ted Bort and have absolutely no idea what the conversation is about. Mercier, it's almost 10,000 to call. But I think Bort talked him out of it. The one card, if that was your high card, then that wasn't good. There's two people you don't want to make mad, and you're both of them, all right? I'm not wanting to ruin any of you, and if I if I go over you, I got something. And if you got something over, you come over me, I was going to go all in. I was ready for that one. Well, then I'm playing pretty good, I guess. That was a good fault. <laughs> but you tell me what you have, I'll tell you what I had. No, thank you. Right. I saw a king, that's enough. 
Jason has all the info he needs from that hand. Let's get back to the featured table where the main event bracelet sits oh so close. Scotty Wynn has steadily built his chip stack today. Let's take a look at his tale of the tape brought to you by the official WSOP game. Play now on Facebook. Scotty's not been too active today. He's played in 13 hands while not in the blinds. But as you can see, he's won most of the hands he's played. Nine of 13, that's pretty good. And he's had more success pre-flop where he's got a five and one record. Post-flop, he's four and three. No matter the stats, you always have to deal with Scotty's aura. So I think, Scotty, if you bust, they probably kick us off the table. So do me a favor, like, you know, keep playing well. You get like it, baby. Here. You get the lights and, you know, a lot of people rooting for me. That's right, baby. Scotty looks down at seven, five clubs into the muck. Folded around to Damian Roney. Roney has a six off suit. A raise to 2,800. Adam Schoenfeld with pocket tens. For the button, he makes the call. Lee Walling with pocket sevens in the small blind. And the amateur from New York makes the call. He probably talks about Bucky Dent all day. <laughs> Big blind folds. Three players will see the flop. Two pocket pair and an ace six. The flop is Trey Ace. Ace, a thing of beauty for Roney now with trip aces. Walling first to act, he checks his pocket pair. Roney slow plays the aces. Adam makes a bet, 4,300. You know, I would have bet 4,300 too. You know, Adam and I have that connection. I guess it's a losing connection. <laughs> Walling folds his sevens. Roney smooth calls with his trips. Roney sitting pretty. Adam's never sitting pretty. It's a seven on the turn. Roney checks again. Adam checks behind him. If Walling had stayed, he would have hit sevens full. And that full house would have come up short as Roney hits quad aces. Boy, and Lon, I think that card's going to cost Adam Schoenfeld some chips because now he'll never put Roney on an ace in his hand. Roney bets 14,005. If I'm Adam, I'm thinking I'm good unless he's got pocket kings, queens, or jacks. I would call and, of course, lose. And he does. And he does. No good. <laughs> ah, show him, Adam! Really? <laughs> Adam's thinking, uh, what can you do? Oh, we're smiling. It's fun. Right, Scotty? Smile all day. That's right, baby. Could be worse. It could be somewhere else. You know, baby, there, there's like oh, almost 5,000 player was in your spot right now. Yeah. So, you know, Scotty baby. speaks the truth. He sure does. Out in the field, the guy every poker player wishes they were. Defending champ Joe Cata has all his chips in the middle with Ace Queen. Bradley Lipson with pocket tens would need over 67,000 to call. If he calls, the champ will be in a race for his main event life and behind. Lipson does call to put Kata at risk. And Joe Kata now hoping some 09 magic is left over. All right, here's the flop. It is all spades. Joe picked up a lot of outs with the flush draw. Yeah, now it's a coin flip, Lon. This could be magic in progress for the champ. All right, the turn card. Seven of clubs. Kata down to his last card, perhaps. Joe Cata looking for an ace, queen, or any spade, or his title defense is done. The river card is a six of clubs, and that will do it. Bradley Lipson knocks out the defending champion. World champ should be able to afford long pants, no? <laughs> it is over for the youngest champ ever. Nothing to be ashamed about, though. Bradley Lipson will remember that for quite a while. Welcome back to the World Series of Poker presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky alongside Norman Chad. I'm Lon McCarran. As day three of the main event rolls on, online players like Peter Jetton, Eric Baldwin, Billy Cobb, and Phil Galfon continue to move towards day four. As do other top pros in the game, including Patrick Antonius, Barry Greenstein, and Gavin Smith. So we roll in Canada. We knock us down, we go to the bench, we get stitched up, we come back on our next ship. Fellow Canadian and top pro Daniel Negrone was hoping that statement holds true as he finds himself short stacked. And still at our featured table tonight, a pair of poker's most colorful characters whose chip stacks are moving in different directions. Much decorated Scotty Wynn is on the uptick, but he's still below the chip average of 119,000. Meanwhile, lesser decorated Adam Schoenfeld has struggled, losing more than a third of his chips here on day three. Yeah, baby, oh do. Going non-alcoholic, perhaps yeah. we'll see a kinder, gentler Scotty win here. Day three often sees big swings and chip stacks, richer pots, and higher pressure to keep ahead of the ever-increasing blinds. The blinds at six and 1,200 on the Jack Link's Beef Jerky Pocket Cam. Adam folds ace five. 
Adam left the business world when the company he partly owned went public and he made a bunch of money, so now we've got him. Now on the button, Ron Gandolfo. He works for New York City Transit, King Four of Diamonds. Do I complain to him about the rats in New York subway stations? From the dealer position, he raises to 3,000. Scotty win with Ace Jack and the small blind. Scotty's looking for a fan to write his life story. Lon, I don't think Scotty needs a writer. His life story pretty much writes itself. Just transcribe. A re-raise to 10,000. Steve Tulch folds, so the re-raise back to Gandolfo. Well, remember, earlier in the day, Gandolfo pushed Scotty off the better hand pre-flop. They're heads up again. All in. Gandolfo all in. with a re-raise all in for over 24,000. He pushes with a king. Scotty's got him well covered. This would be for about 20% of the champ's chips. All right, baby. And Scotty's baby. okay. Oh. Let's do it. And Scotty sees he's in good shape. Gandolfo decide to gamble here with 20 big blinds left. He's a 3-2 to two dog looking for a double up against Scotty. In that earlier hand you Good mentioned, up, Gandolfo pushed Scotty off his ace-king while he was holding just ace-queen. Here's the flop. It is deuce 10-8. Scotty still good with his ace-high. Gandolfo now a 3-1 to one dog looking to double up. It's another deuce. No help to Gandolfo. Gandolfo now a 6-1 to one dog. He needs a king or a four. It is a 10 on the river. Ron Gandolfo knocked out by Scotty Wynn. Hey, buddy, I take the A train a lot. If you can look into that rap thing when you get home. Earlier, Scotty had threatened to track Gandolfo down if he learned the amateur was bluffing him. So now, now I know he bluffed me the last hand, baby. <laughs> Gandolfo <laughs> paid the ultimate price. I doubt anyone else will be bluffing Scotty soon. Well, Norman, I do realize there's still a long way to go and a lot of people left, but as the main event rolls along and the field continues to shrink, the remaining players get to know each other more and more. And certainly there is already a fair amount of familiarity at this feature table. Lon, tonight we give you the Prince and the Pauper. Scotty Wynn is indeed the Prince of Poker, and the 98 World Champ is poised to make another deep run. And then there is the Pauper, Adam Schoenfeld, who took forever to finally cash at the World Series. Since he and I have that in common and Phil Ivey has been eliminated, I now have someone new to root for. Adam has twice as many World Series caches as you, Norman, and he's making another run here. How old are you, you don't want me to ask you? Me? Yeah, 46. And I used to look a lot younger, Liar, too. Liar, you're not 46. Please. Wow, well, that's a good thing. I thought you were much younger. I'm older than Adam, and I got carded playing Kino last oh, week at the Rainforest <laughs> Cafe. That's crazy. <laughs> All right, we go to a much quieter table, too. No mistaking the now muzzled Ted Board. He's continuing to observe the no barking policy at the World Series. He's looking on as four players just saw the flop. Jason Mercier is best with pocket nines. David Williams sits with a gut shot straight draw. Filippo Condio has a pair of eights, and Jordan Christos was dealt pocket deuces, and that's what he's left with. Condio and Christos checked. Mercier now. Mercier always no wasted movements. Yeah, trying to reduce the number of opponents with his pocket nines. Bets 8,300. Williams cashed at last year's main event. And he'll call. Condio gets out of the way. Christos lays down, so it's heads up to the turn. And the turn card is a seven. Mercier adds an up and down straight draw. Williams got no help. He's an electrical contractor in Maryland. Oh, I have some uh, recessed lighting issues. Jason Mercier checks. 18. 18,000. Mercier's got a, a zen-like presence at the table. He's like soft jazz, very mellow. And Jason makes the call for 18,000. And the river card against David Williams. It's a Jack Mercier rivers his straight. That also gave Williams top pair. Mercier, just 23, already with a World Series bracelet and an EPT title. And with the check mark, that's 32,500. Mercier has been ahead every step of the way. Oh. Williams makes the call. And Jason shows him the straight. I, I, I hate to see that card. Williams shaking his head, but he was behind every okay. step of the way. Thank you. Jason finished fourth at the World Series Europe main event last year, and he is pretty much treading water so far here on day three. So from the 09 Bluff Magazine Player of the Year to the guy who has all but wrapped up the 2010 World Series Player of the Year, Frank Casella has a commanding lead, winning two bracelets this year. Frank on the river with two other players, Kirby Lauer and Mark Nino, and Casella bets 10,000. Action on Nino. Nino graduated from UC Santa Barbara, college home of mild breezes and Lon McCarran. <laughs> He's already my favorite to win the main event, and he raises to 43,000. Kirby Lauer folds. Before this year, Casella had no bracelets, one final table, and six World Series caches. This year alone, two bracelets, 
three final tables and five caches. And he calls for 33,000. And Frank's not a pro. Nino shows eights and queens. Casella jacks and queens to win the pot. That was hard. <laughs> Almost threw up on my shoes having to call that one. That's why I never wear sandals. <laughs> <laughs> If Casella does not cash in the main event and Michael Mizraki <laughs> wins the main event, the grinder will be our player of the year. So Casella is our player of the year. <laughs> not quite yet. The grinder holding ace king has called the all-in of George Kalaitzis, who's hoping his pocket queens hold up. Kalaitzis will have that earring surgically removed after the main event. Turn card pairs aboard, no help to the grinder. The river card's a seven, and so Kalaitzis will double up through Michael Mizraki. Grinder going the wrong direction today. And it's a worse story for former player of the year, Daniel Negrano. He's short stacked and a hand with two other players, Mike Adamo and Eric Carr. Daniel and Carr checked an ace eight jack flop. I think Carr is young enough to be Adam Schoenfeld's grandson. <laughs> Adamo's gonna bet 5,000. Five Negrano commits the last of his chips. 98 total. Action on Carr. And he will make the call to put Daniel at risk. Daniel at risk and on edge. Adamo made the call, so all three see the turn card of a king. Carr checked, Adamo bets 15,000. So action over to Carr, and he folds. Make it straight there? Adamo with Broadway. A, a disappointing World Series for Daniel Negrano is about to get more disappointing. He needs a jack or an eight. Wait, dealer, he wants, he wants to... The river card is a six, and that will do it. Adamo knocks out Daniel Negrano, who makes a quick exit. And once again, the main event gets the better of Daniel Negrano. Another bitter pill to swallow, just one cash in the last nine main events. Back at the reel, let's get over to table two. Jason Mercier now moving in the right direction, sitting with about 300,000 chips. Action folded to him, and he looks down at Ace Queen off. In 2009, Mercier won five tournaments and made 11 final tables. In early position from under the gun, plus one, Jason with a raise over to Ted Bort, King Queen off. His nickname is Road Dog, but that's because he moves around a lot. Bort called to Williams. I told you he owned an electrical business. What would you call it if you were him? David Williams Electric? Exactly. Ha! Huh. With pocket queens, he re-raises from the hijack position. This is where I have confidence in Jason Mercier. Ace Queen's a loser. He's going to muck it. Call time. Just kidding. <laughs> You're right, man. Take your time. <laughs> I was gonna say, I've been thinking for like 30 nah, seconds. Nah, man, I'm just, I'm just messing with you. Take your time. Hey, Mercer, you want me to take him out now? You want me to take him out, man? Why don't you guys both try to take me out? I like you, man. I think you're a pretty cool cat. My wife calls me an a all the time. <laughs> I hear you, brother. Jason folded. Bort made the call. He'll go heads up with Williams and his queens. The flop is 8-6. King! Had Bort pairs you. his king. How did it what? How did that hit you? No, I, I, I look at my cards. I forgot what I got, man. You make me nervous. Bort usually does like talking during hands. Well, top pair bets 16,000. Call. Williams makes the call. When I look at Bort, Lon, I just think of a pot of water about to boil over. <laughs> Jack of spades. Bort's still ahead. Williams picked up a flush draw. I'm going to check to you. Try to save my tournament life. I hear you. <laughs> Williams does not check. 25,000. <laughs> Bort will make the call. All right, let's see what the river brings. Five of clubs, Bort with the check mark. You got me beat. I'm gonna check to you. You got the king. He's got the king. Whew. I was looking for the river. No barking, Fido. <laughs> I think his water dish is over in that corner. <laughs> oh, I was ready to go all in. I was ready to leave. I was ready to leave on that one, baby. Uh, they won't let me bark. Yeah, can't howl, huh? No, I can't do nothing. They don't want me disrupting the tournament any longer. I heard you from, I was in the uh, pavilion room. I heard you uh, <laughs> over here. I'm going to bark my butt off. When they cut this table, I'm going to bark because they can't he tell He is me. a unique character, but Bort says it's his unusual background that gives him an advantage at the poker table. I was born in Chicago, and I ended up in social services uh, as uh, in the foster care and children's homes. At 19 years old, I left Chicago, went to Dallas, and became a male stripper for three and a half years. Was working um, in various places to try to find myself, and uh, actually ended up in jail. A lot of people said, well, you had a tough life. I said, no, I had a good life. I've experienced everything. 
Seeing more gave me the experience how to handle things, how to work with people, how to be genuine. And I think it's made me look at people and I can read people really well. Talk to me or what? I got a good hand. When I get to the table, I can pick up almost any sense anybody gives me. I don't care who it is. I'm a very dangerous player. A lot of people take a negative and make it more of a negative. Well, I take a negative and make it a positive. Bort is now the founder and president of an IT company in California, but he's not the CEO, so we can't say he's the top dog. Oh, back to the feature table. Scotty went over 100,000 right now. Where's the nearest bathroom, baby? You've been playing here in the Rio for the last six years. You don't know where the bathrooms are? <laughs> so I guess Scotty will sit this hand out. To the left, to the left. <laughs> Action on Steve Tulch, amateur player, owns a paper recycling facility in Montreal, ace jack of spades. 36. He'll raise it up to 3,600. Blinds are up to eight and 1,600. Damian Roney with ace, king of diamonds. He used to use recycled paper lawn when he was an economics student. A re-raise from the small blind to 11,002. Schoenfeld with queen four. Adam's shirt is made out of recycled paper. Adam lays down, so the re-raise back to Tulch, and he calls for 7,600 more. So heads up, Roney with his ace king, ace jack for Tulch, and there's an ace for both. Roney out kicking Tulch. Roney first to act. He bets 14,006 with his ace king. To Tulch now. He makes the call. Tulch dominated as they're going to the turn, and welcome back, Scotty Wynn. You didn't miss much, Scotty. Roney three bet pre flop with ace king and let out on the flop for 14,000. Adam Schoenfeld hasn't said a word. He must be meditating. You're up to date. Turn card now. Roney ahead. It's a jack, and Tulch takes control with aces up. Interesting card line. Very interesting. Roney with a gut shot. Checks. Now Tulch comes with 36,000. 36, Roney's got his thinking cap on which would be hard to get over his head of hair. He raises Tulch all in. Wow. Scotty got back just in time. It's like law and order. It really doesn't heat up until the second half of the show. <laughs> That's so sick. That is so sick. Why would you do that? Because he's a kid with a so dream. sick. If you have king, queen. I call. Tulch makes the correct call there, and he's headed for a double up. It's the right call. Come on. Tulch does make the right call for his main event life. Roney will need a king or a queen to knock him out. River card is another deuce. deuce. And Tulch doubles up to over 263,000. Roney gives up about half his stack. Tulch is pleased with himself. That's the biggest part of the day, baby. Yeah, so the recycler could be turning his chips into wow. cash money very soon. Thank Scotty you. admiring Tulch's good fortune. Out in the field, another world champion looking to keep ahead of the pack. One-time chip leader Johnny Chan has put some heat on his opponent Josh Brickus after the river card. Brickus had just doubled through Chan, knocking Johnny down to about 400,000. Brickus giving this some serious thought against the two-time world champ. Brick has four caches at this World Series. He's about to get married, so he's under a lot of pressure. <laughs> and he does fold, and Chan will stack the chips. He's moving back toward that half million chip mark. But big stacks can disappear quickly, and Billy Kopp knows that all too well. With 230,000, he checked Ray's all in on the turn with aces full, but was hit by a sledgehammer when he saw that Nicola Babel had quad eights. Boy, when Billy Cop goes out, he goes out with a bang. Last year, he flopped a flush. This year, he turned aces full. He went all in against Darvin Moon on the turn, drawing dead. He goes all in here on the turn, drawing dead to the last ace in the deck. And he comes up short once again. Cop knocked out by Babel. If I'm Billy Cop, I might think about another line of work. And Cop makes another painful walk out of the Rio poker room. Deja vu of the worst kind. Time now for Deal Me In, brought to you by FullTiltPoker.net. At the 2006 Main Event Final Table, Alan Cunningham faced a big decision against Jamie Gold and relied on his knowledge of the opponent and a keen eye. So we'll go to the river card. It's a queen, and that earns Cunningham the check mark. I check any bets. Two million bet from Jamie Gold. I've been showing a lot of bluffs. I don't mind showing. <laughs> They seemed to be telling the truth a lot and made it possible to figure out what he had. So I'm pretty much going to call anyway. Just for fun, I decided to talk to him a little bit and do a little dance. I was thinking of calling it anyway. All right. Oh, wait, I didn't call yet. Hold on. 
you call. Uh, uh, they're not going to show you their hand. They're just pretending like they're going to show it to you. So that's actually kind of a classic little tell. That means they're bluffing. I will call it. You're good. And Cunningham with a great call. Wow, what a call. Still Alan Cunningham. He finished fourth in that main event, and right now he's sitting next to Donnie Mizraki, one of the four Mizraki brothers still in the main event. He's the youngest of the flying Mizrakis. Donnie, the magician, lays down to his opponent there, but his brother at another table, Eric, just won a pot. He's the twin brother of the grinder. I think they call him the smasher. <laughs> Eric picking up a few more chips. He needs all he can to make the money. Huge. Not a huge chip stack yet. Over to the Ringo of this Fab Four. <laughs> that would be the oldest of the Mizraki brothers, 32-year-old Robert, and oh. a hand with Lauren Kling, a bumper oh. pro from Las Vegas. Really? Four of diamonds on the river. Psst, I'm Norman Chad. I, I kind of run things around here. Can I help you? <laughs> Lauren Kling. Oh, all in for Lauren, 146.8. Oh, Ringo can't call. Can't we show the all-in player again, please? <laughs> please? Thank you. There you uh, go. I love romantic walks at sunset around the Rio Buffet. Oh, uh, fold quickly, Robert. Yeah, Robert does lay it down to Kling's all in. To Brother Michael, who has kings up and in position to knock out Nick Stowell from Portland, Oregon, who'll need an ace to stay alive. River card is a king, and the grinder gets the knockout. I'll say he's a combination of Jermaine and Tito. <laughs> and Nick Stowell will make the walk. But with that hand, Grinder about where he started the Dan Chips, 221,000. Heading back to the feature table, Scotty wins chip total of 111,000, is still hovering just below the chip average right now, while fellow pro Adam Schoenfeld is still a bit low with 48,000. Action folds around to Adam, and Adam looks down at a couple of queens. Adam once was a bike messenger in New York City and once was an agate clerk at Associated Press. Now I'm really not sure what he does. From under the gun plus two, Adam raises to 4,100, folded to Chuck Danielson with a couple of nines. Danielson's a legitimate poker pro and I think Adam just plays one on TV. From the dealer button, a re-raise to 6,600. Scotty now in the big blind. Looks at a tray of clubs and folds. Back to Schoenfeld. With his queens, he's all in. How can Adam look this serious? It's just poker. So it's on Danielson. Okay, I call. And he makes the call. You're ahead. Hey, that's my job. Adam Schoenfeld is a headline, a four to one favorite to stay alive. Adam's felt the sting of a main event bad beat. You can cheer up, you got the best hand. Smile one time. I know you got a smile in there somewhere. There, oh, oh, almost. Sir, there's no upside to him smiling, but it's a nice thought. Here's the flop and a queen in the door. That's worth smiling about, Adam. Smile, buddy. The 2% hand is smiling. Can we get a sweat with a 10? Is that okay? Will you allow it? I'd prefer not to. <laughs> you got my suit dominated, too. Turn guard now. Four of spades. That will do it. Danielson drawing dead. Adam Schoenfeld will double up. There, smile now. There you go. There we go. <laughs> that doesn't count as a smile. Don't be, don't be steaming, baby. <laughs> oh, steaming. At least I lost it to Adam, not this guy. <laughs> Here we go. You know, baby, so far you're the, the nicest New York player, player. There we go. Thank you very much. Adam is thinking, nice guys finish last. I have most of your chips. Hi, baby. Baby, baby. baby. Oh. <laughs> you get it, baby. You get it. <laughs> enough is enough, man. No. Enough is enough. Easy, baby. That's right. <laughs> That's right, baby. Only, only thing I know how to say baby. is no. baby. No. No, 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 no. Only not not, baby. Sorry, baby. Through good times and bad at the World Series, Scotty's status as a true star in poker is undeniable. You're the only one they put on the big screen. See this? Look. Yeah. You're the only one. <laughs> I haven't seen anybody else. <laughs> Even when Scotty went tweets, every fourth word is baby. <laughs> Action on Scotty on the Jack Link's beef jerky pocket cam. He has ace six and into the muck. I would write Scotty's life story, but I just think something would be lost in translation. <laughs> Quite possible. Damian Roney looks down at 10 nine of diamonds. This kid had a crew cut when the main event began. From under the gun plus three, a raise to 3,800. Adam Schoenfeld, ace queen off. Adam famously was 0 for 27 at the World Series. No caches before finally breaking through in the main event two years ago. Adam makes the call. 
Almost nine million dollars for first prize this year, Lon. That seems like a large number. That's a lot of guacamole. Roni eyeing Adam's chip stack. He should check out Adam's bank account. Yeah. That's more impressive. The flop now is 9-4. Trey Roney with a pair of nines to take the lead. Schoenfeld, no help for the ace-queen. Adam looks pained. He should be. He's got ace-queen. Roney bets 4,100. All right, Adam, hand over. Nope. I'm rooting for Adam, but he's not listening to me. All right, turn card now. Roney ahead. It's a king on the turn. Roney still ahead. Adam got no help. By the way, is Adam under some type of gag order? I mean, Bort can't bark, but Adam can talk. Roney bets 10,000, leading with those nines. I think Adam was playing to make a play here if Roney had checked. Yeah, but Roney bet, so Adam folds. No, Adam wanted to talk there. He, he's so conflicted today. Yeah, Adam has not been very talkative at this table, but out in the field is a guy who talks out of all sides of his mouth. What do you mean? <laughs> What's the mont you call him Mo a monster? Hey, Kazaria entertaining his table mates between hands. That's the voice of Mo from The Simpsons. Give me some tough man. Come on. 21 seasons with The Simpsons. That is amazing. We'll get there someday, Norman. Another player who's had a role in a hit TV series right there. Jean Robert Ballon was a contestant on Survivor. Right now, he's in a hand with Barry Shulman, who put out a raise on the river. I think Jean Robert is a reality series all his own. He's like Kramer with a gambling habit. <laughs> Actually, Kramer also had a gambling habit. Yeah, he did indeed. Ballon makes the fold, and Shulman will take the pot. Jean Robert, 442nd in the 2008 main event. Adam Schoenfeld, 424th that year. From a Survivor contestant to a real-life Survivor, Steve Buckner just laid down his hand after the turn. How is Steve Buckner not a character on a TV show? If he were on The Sopranos, they would have whacked him in season four. Well, he has been getting whacked here lately. Buckner down to 13,000. Let's take a look at some of the other notable chip stacks. Johnny Chan leads with over 420,000. Peter Jedden and Eric Baldwin sit with very comfortable stacks. Back over at table two, Jason Mercier slightly above where he started the day, has 249,000. Action on David Williams here. He looks down at ace seven of spades. Even when it's hard to see, the ace of spades line remains the prettiest card in the deck. Williams limps in for 2,000. Filippo Condio now. Condio peeks at pocket sixes. He cashed at a no limit hold'em event earlier at this World Series. And he makes a raise with a small pocket pair to 5,700. Over to Bill Melvin, the amateur from Huntsville, Alabama, with ace king off. A lot of A's in Alabama, Lon. <laughs> and he's got one of them there with the ace king, a re-raise to 15,000. Mercier with ace king also. He didn't like college, he didn't like working. Jason figured he'd better play poker well so he doesn't have to do anything else. Jason getting busy with a re-raise to 38,200. He plays poker pretty well. So Bort lays down back to Williams now with the small ace, he folds. Condia with pocket sixes. So his chip stack line matches his shirt. Very nice. <laughs> the big stack bets enough to put the other two at risk. The best hand I've had in hours. Wow, Condio pushes with a small pocket pair. I have to fold it. Now a decision for all of Mercier's chips. I'm so quick, man. Lon, I am stunned, almost in shock, that Condio could five bet all in with pocket sixes and 100 big blinds left. It is the best hand. But the guy three betting it, or, or the guy four betting it, might have a bigger pocket pair. Condio's betting like he has the monster pair, and he's counting on Mercier not wanting to risk all his chips. Jason lays down his ace king. Condio shows one six. Oh, oh you're kidding. <laughs> oh, what a play. One of us should have been in there, buddy. <laughs> should have just done what I always do. Never fold. <laughs> <laughs> you come in smirking like that? You're too cocky for this table. I don't like you. Come on now, man. Be nice. <laughs> that is nice. Hey, that is a nice side of me. Know what you're I told saying. you I was angry, so individual. I tried to understand. That was a bluff. That was all bluff. <laughs> the young like Italian it. having trouble I'm following the conversation. The whole time. He was joking. I was, joking. was joking. I was joking. I'm dead serious, man. The guys are Yes, I know, but I, I don't understand you. <laughs> <laughs> Neither do we, son. <laughs> I think Jason wants a do-over there, but it's Condio who's counting his chips and is all smiles. Back at the Rio, the field on day three continues to shrink as a steady stream of players head out of this poker room. Former chess master Jeff Sarer hoping not to join them. He's all in with King Queen off. He's up against Donnie Kidman and his pocket queens. Kidman, a 23-year-old Michigan pro. 
Sauer with three caches, and this is first World Series. Deuce trays six. Kidman's queen still in control. Sauer with one overcard looking for help. The turn card does not bring it. Sauer is going to need a king or his main event is over. The 32-year-old has had a nice run here at the main event. The river card is a five, and that will do it. Jeff Sauer knocked out. Donnie Kidman will stack the 74,000 chip pot. That was one congenial chess master, Lon. I hope to see him again here. Oh, well. He certainly knows how to play the game. So Sauer heads out of the poker room. It may also be the end for Heather Sue Mercer and her chance to taste that cookie that she'll eat only if she survives the day. She's all in and at risk with pocket fives against the pocket kings of Rafael Sanz Rodrigo. Turn card now is an eight. No help to Heather Sue Mercer. And Mercer's got to have a five on the river or she is eliminated. The river card is a three, and that will do it. Sans Rodrigo knocks out Heather Sue Mercer. She doesn't get to eat that cookie, but she's got plenty more at the bakery she runs with her sisters in New York City. Like Barry Greenstein and Greg Raymer, she should give the cookie to Raphael. So the poker room continues to thin out as day three moves on. Just over 1,400 players remain. But you could add a few more to that number if you include the many characters portrayed by Hank Azaria on The Simpsons. He's looking at a board with a lot of paint on it. All right, I'll, uh, Chief Wiggum. <laughs> Remember, you're playing against Chief Wiggum. He's going to hand it with Yosuke Sakia, who puts out a bet on the river. Book him, Chief. Hank thinking about it. Book him, Chief. Uh, I think the Chief is going to let him get away. Not a great board for this hand. Azaria shows pocket nines and folds. Well, I'm not playing as Chief Wiggum anymore. That's for damn sure. <laughs> <laughs> I should have known. Chief Wiggum, nothing goes right for Chief Wiggum. So Chief Wiggum has to give up a few chips. But overall, how would the characters from Springfield do at the poker table? I started playing poker around the time I started working on The Simpsons, yeah. <laughs> I had a good hand. They're here. Mo would not take a bad beat well. No, Mo would curse. <laughs> Why you? When I get a hold of you, I'm gonna stick your face so far down your throat you'll be able to see out your rear end. He would say things like that. Now, Professor Frank would have a decent chance of being a wonderful card player. He would uh, definitely know the odds in any given moment. He would certainly be aware of the correct play to make. Comic book guy would probably go, consider yourself all in. He'd probably turn it around on you. He'd make it like weird. You, sir, are all in. I feel that Apu would be not a good card player because he's got eight children, first of all. So he'd always be scared money. You know? I feel Chief Wiggum would be an extraordinarily bad card player. You probably know how, but A, he's, how do you say this politically correctly? He's stupid. I wish I could say I make more money at poker, but thankfully I've done better financially with The Simpsons than at poker. Sorry, nothing happened. You can all go away now. Go find somebody else to pick on. Azaria has won four Emmys for his voice work on The Simpsons. Or stay there and, and stare at me. All right, we'll stop staring at Hank Azaria and go back to the feature table where Scotty Wynn has been slightly more active than the rest of the table, as shown by a voluntary hand percentage of 20, putting him above the table average. Adam Schoenfeld just below that average at 16%. Adam also below his usual conversation average. Adam with kings. Don't do it, baby. You know, I've gone to dinner with Adam when he's talked for two straight hours, but today he's just having conversations in his head. Adam does it. He raises Scotty's big blind to 5,000 over to Chuck Danielson. Chuck looks down at Pocket Jacks. Pocket Jacks, Lon, tell him. Uh, Scotty warned you. Don't do it. <laughs> Danielson all in. <laughs> I, I told him, baby. <laughs> you knew it. You said, don't do it, baby. <laughs> don't do it, baby. You don't. <laughs> Scotty in the big blind with pocket deuces. Oh, my God. <laughs> He'll lay him down. <laughs> Aces? I have jacks. Daniel said in deep trouble oh, and at risk God. with his jacks. Look at this guy. He's so sad. He's got me pipped by two every time. He can't even smile. Well, he's waiting for the flop. He's got a bad feeling. I got a good feeling about this one. I think I might make a flush. <laughs> I feel about 80%. <laughs> I have a pair too, baby. I'm always rooting for Adam, but this Chuck Danielson is my type of guy, losing gracefully. Here's the flop. It is six ace queen, all clubs. Club sweat. Club sweat. Club sweat. Can someone tell Adam that he's ahead and about to knock out the other guy? All right, turn card. Oh, a deuce. Oh, Scotty, baby. Scotty, fold the deuces. Scotty, baby. Oh. Adam Schoenfeld, the Grim Reaper. Danielson needs a jack or he's gone. 
River card is a oh, tray. Oh That'll up. do it. Chop it up. No chop. Sorry. Chuck Danielson nice gone meeting. for the main event. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you. Don't forget. He'll be nice missed. Meeting you. Scotty, baby, come on, man. Give me a hug. Let's go. You got it, baby. All right. Good luck, okay. man. All right, baby. <laughs> nice meeting you. It, it was nice meeting Adam. <laughs> he, he, you know, he is a nice player, you know? He's good for a play with each other, not nasty people, you know? Mean. All right. No stronger preacher than a converted center. Last year's fourth place finisher in action in this main event and a hand against Gabe Walls, who was a one-time chip leader this year and last year. After a king on the turn, Walls bets 18,000. Two pretty good poker minds. Walls is 26, Buckman 30. And Buckman makes the call and they'll see a river card. Five of hearts. Walls checks. Buckman check. checks as well. Yeah. Buckman says, yeah, I got a pair. He's actually got two pair. King's up. And it looks like Buckman gets the better of that battle. Yeah. Walls, another Magic the Gathering graduate. Buckman, a SUNY Albany graduate. Buckman has more than doubled his chips from the start of today. He's over 300,000, but still far behind the chip leader, James Carroll. In this tournament, Carroll crippled Phil Helmuth, went head-to-head -head with Negrano, just knocked out another victim, and he's now the chip leader with nearly 780,000. Could be a bright poker future for the 24-year-old. Another player who's rolling today? Well, not just a player, it's Johnny Chan, over 700,000. Johnny Chan. He is clashing again with the other big stack at this table, Josh Brickus. Chan limp, re-raised pre-flop with ace-king. Josh Brickus calls. He's ahead with pocket nines. Trying to play a big pot here at the end of the night. I think Josh Brickus has borrowed Johnny Chan's sunglasses. Brickus still ahead with his pocket nines. Chan bets 33,000. And Brickus makes the call. Chan's been in a pretty good zone, but Brickus, a 30-year-old pro from Pittsburgh, is not backing down from him. Turn card is another four. Johnny will check that. Brickus likewise. River card, tray of hearts. Brickus with his nines up is best. Chan checked. And it looks like Johnny has given up on the hand. Brickus checks as well. Two pair, sir. That can be checked. Two pair from Brickus is good. It's nines and fours. This Brickus fella can play, but he's got a marriage coming up. Good luck. <laughs> He is over 700,000 right now while Chan falls below that mark, but still in a very comfortable position. Certainly better than Steve Buckner, who's been knocked out. Later, cuz. He made quite an impression during his short main event stay, and the cigar is intact. Back at the featured table, Adam Schoenfeld sits with 122,000 chips. Scotty Wynn has a bit less with about 107,000. Let's take a look at how they've gotten to this point. On the tail of the tape, you see Adam's success rate compared to Scotty's. Scotty not only playing more voluntary hands than Adam, but having more success. Both doing most of their damage pre-flop. Scotty winning 12 of 15 hands pre-flop. But look at Adam post-flop with a very pauper-like 2-6 and six record. And speaking of losing records, Norman, it's time for the Jack Link's Beef Jerky Wild Card hand. Sometimes I homer, sometimes I strike out. <laughs> Action is folded to Masood Nikjuyan in the small blind. And he has the Jack Link's wild card hand. Good luck. How, how do I put a complete stranger on a hand? I've got a better chance of telling you what he might order in a restaurant. <laughs> he makes the call. Well, from the small blind, I'll put him on Jack 8 offsuit. Scotty win. King 4 of diamonds Come in the on, big baby. blind. If I were Scotty, I would have popped him. Less babies, more raises, Scotty. All right, they see the flop for the minimum. The flop is 10 king ace. Scotty hits a pair of kings. Nick Julian first to act. He's cashed four times at World Series events. Putting chips together, 2,500. He's got nothing, Scotty, but I believe he would order bullabays in a French restaurant. Pop him! Scotty just calls. Ah. Turn card is a tray. That does not help Scotty win. This guy's got nothing. Jack ate off suit, but I believe he would order a Ros con pollo in a Cuban restaurant. Check to the river. Another 10. Scotty with kings up. You know, when, when you wear your jacket like a cape, you tend to bluff more than the next guy. Masood Nick Julian bets 5,000. He's got nothing, Scotty. Jack ate. But I believe he would order the Gordita Supreme at Taco Bell. Oh, yeah. Scotty's going to lay it down. Now, what do we got for this guy? Jack Link's beef jerky wild card hand is queen five. I let you get there, baby. He took food out of your mouth, Scotty. I was there. You got lucky there, baby. He got lucky. Scotty didn't call. 
All right, let's go back to table two where Jason Mercier is looking on as Ted Bort has 8-7 suited. He just called the re-raise of David Williams with pocket queens in the cutoff. So two amateurs to the flop. Williams with a 4-1 to one advantage. The flop is 6-jack-8. Williams queen still ahead. Bort now with a pair of eights. Bort checks. Williams has been playing poker seriously for about 10 years. And he'll bet 17,000. Something about Bortlon, I don't think I could beat him heads up if we played 100 times. He has quite a presence at the table, and he'll call with his two eights. Turn card five of spades. Bort still more than a two-to-one dog, but he picks up an up-and-down straight draw and checks again. Williams working his gum. Chips in hand. 28,000 of them. Too small of a bet, Lon. That, that price is Bort in. Bort gets three and a half to one on a call here. And Bort does make that call. If Williams had bet more, it's a tougher decision for Bort right there. River card. Oh, and Bort got there, hitting his nine high straight. And I guarantee you, he's barking internally. Let's see how much he's betting here now on the river with the straight. I'm all in. Everything he's got. Oh. And a call from Williams. He's got a straight. He's got a straight. And Bort will double up. Woof. Woof. And Williams will hand more chips to Ted Bort. There's that eight nine shoved up right up in there. Oh, patience. And there's patience. my boy. Patience. Hey. Huh? I just went all in with a guy. I just doubled up in chips. It's awesome. Norm, don't call me a donkey. Nah, that's your wife's job. Ted Bord wanting to share his success with the family. And this dog big, is having quite a day. That was big. Back to the Rio. Day three beginning to wind down. And Hank Azaria among the many looking to hang on and advance to day four. It's impressive Azaria's still here this late on day three. It's up, it's down. I'm still scratching. Not unlike many of the 1,300 or so still in the room. Look at the stacks at this table. Look what's going on here. Yeah, plenty of Shoot chips at Azaria's down. table. <laughs> the mean big kids in the schoolyard. Let's take a look at the top 10 chip counts presented by PokerStars.net. The biggest stack belongs to James Carroll, but the name that stands out among all the others is Johnny Chan in ninth place. What a remarkable story if Chan could somehow win here 22 years after he went back to back. Jean Robert Ballon a bit further down the list, but in good position to add to his stack. He has pocket queens and called the preflop all in from Marc Barrier. Turn card now, King of Hearts, Barrier with a royal flush draw. The Barrier needs a queen or a heart to survive. The river card is the Queen oh. of Hearts. Royal flush. Oh, oh, a royal. Flush. Royal flush. Yeah. Ballon absorbs that blow pretty well. Wow. Runner, runner, royal flush. Ooh la la. And the French poker pro doubles up through Jean Robert Ballon, who's thinking, yeah, that's just how I run. Back to table two, where Ted Board and Jason Mercier are looking on as one of the tournament's biggest pots has developed pre flop. With Kings, Filippo Condio made an initial raise. Jordan Christos re-raised with his aces. Condio came back over the top, followed by another re-raise from Christos before Condio six-bet Christos all in, which of course he called, and his aces have Condio's Kings crushed. All right, here we go to the flop. Almost 700,000 in the pot. Queen six deuce, Christos still ahead. What a pre-flop raising war between these two and Condio on the short end of it. A 10 on the turn changes nothing. Condio about to be crippled. He needs a king to knock out Christos. And the river card yes, is the sir! king! Yes, sir! No, no. See me! No, no, no. I believe Condio wins and Christos loses. Jordan Christos knocked out by a lightning bolt. My God. What a game changer. Condio vaults to one of the top five chip stacks. And that's worth a bark from Bort, while Jason can't believe what he's seen. <laughs> the weirdest day of poker in my life. It has been an eclectic evening at table two. Back at the feature table, things are a little calmer for Scotty Wynn. My day one, my table was the nicest table I ever played for at real? the main really? World Series. And then, and then today. It's a real treat sitting beside you, my friend. I admire Thanks, your baby. play, honestly. When Scotty acts like the You're Prince of Poker, poker it player. is a real treat. 
Walking around the halls of the Rio, he is one of the favored poker pros here, and Steve Tulch getting a taste of that here at this feature table tonight. Action has folded around to Scotty Wynn, and he looks down at pocket eights. Scotty Wynn came to Las Vegas about 27 years ago with $6 in his pocket and never left. He raises to 4,400. Tulch folds to Damian Roney in the small blind with King, Queen of Diamonds. I'm going to bet Roney's got exactly $6 in his pocket right now. He's got enough to call Scotty Wynn's raise over to Adam Schoenfeld in the big blind. Adam with 8-7 of hearts. Adam is co-host of The Scoop on CardPlayer.com with his good friend Diego Cordovez. When he's not there, they say he's on overseas assignment. Please, Adam's just wandering around Thailand looking for some good noodles. <laughs> he makes the call as well. Three players will see the flop. It is deuce six king. Roney hits top pair. Scotty's pocket eights are way behind, and Adam missed that flop. Roney checks the best hand. Schoenfeld checks the worst hand. Scotty Wynn's going to take charge. Yeah, he's going to see where his eights are. He bets 5,000. Roney, just a call. And Adam will sit this one out. Well, with that coy check call, Roney's got Scotty just where he wants him. All right, so heads up. Here's the turn card. Another king, Roney with trips now. Scotty wondering what Roney will do. He has chips. 13,000. Almost half the pot. Here comes Scotty again. Scotty makes that call. Obviously, he does not put Roney on a king. It's a nine of diamonds on the river. Roney with the check mark. Can he get any more out of Scotty Wynn? Roney will try. 27,000. If Scotty doesn't think Roney has a king, Scotty's going to believe his pocket eights are good. And a call from Scotty. And there's the king. Scotty Wynn loses that pot to the French poker pro. Sometimes even a prince can play like a pauper. Just a misread from the 98 champ. 100,000 chip pot to Damian Roney. And Scotty's feelings about this table may have done a 180 in the span of that hand. Ah, the emotional roller coaster of this main event. Day three was moving out day for a lot of top pros, including Phil Locke. But other big names look forward to day four, including Michael Mizraki, who leads a budding poker dynasty another step closer to the final table. Four brothers, day four. And Johnny Chan, who continues his quest towards a remarkable third world title. <laughs> I don't even know how I got this chip. Day four now lies ahead, where players can begin to say they're in the money. For Norman Chad, I'm Lon McCarran. Thanks for watching the World Series of Poker.